we move on to factoring polynomials. Our goal, whenever I have an operation for the integers, we want a corresponding operation for polynomials. For instance, we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of polynomials. Now we want to consider factoring. What is factoring? Well, if I have an integer, say 12, I can write 12 as 2 times 2 times 3. We can't factor 2 and 3 down any further because they're prime. So complete factorization of 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. For a given polynomial, we want to write that polynomial as a product of polynomials with smaller degree, such that they can't be factored any further. Now, we start with greatest common factor in the technique of grouping. So greatest common factor. Here, we think of this as we're moving the easy part of the polynomial. So when I pull out the greatest common factor, what is left over may be very easy to deal with, but not always. Now, we have a checklist. So parts one and two define the greatest common factor. We're gonna go through our polynomial term by term. First, I go through term by term and consider only the number parts. We take the largest divisor of all the numbers, we set it aside. Part two, we're gonna go through term by term for each variable. When I go through, I'm gonna record the lowest exponent. That's gonna give us the part of the greatest common factor for that variable. If that variable doesn't appear in a given term, then we don't use that variable at all. So I put one and two together, that's our greatest common factor. Then to factor that out, we're gonna use the distributive rule backwards. And finally, we multiply to check. So for some examples, if I take 35x to the fifth plus 25x squared, okay, we know it. Step one, we look at the numbers. So the largest divisor of 35 and 25 is gonna be five. So I set it aside. Then our variable is x. So we look at the powers of x, the smallest exponents of two. So I set aside an x squared. Our greatest common factor is 5x squared. Now, that's our greatest common factor, so now I want to pull that out of the polynomial. So I ask myself, okay, I have 5x squared, what do I multiply 5x squared by to get to 35x to the fifth? To go from 5 to 35, I need a 7. To go from x squared to x to the fifth, I need x cubed. So that takes care of the first term. For the second term, when we multiply 5x squared by to get to 25x squared. We'll note that x squared is already taken care of, so it's just gonna be a number. So we'll note if I multiply five by five, I get to the 25, so we're gonna have only a five in our second term. So that's our factorization. Now, we check our work. So you just multiply 5x squared into each term using the distributive rule. We note here, essentially all we're checking is that our exponents add up correctly. So I want this two plus three to go to the five as promised. Another example, so here we have more than one variable. We have 12x squared y squared minus three x y the fourth. Same idea, we go through each term and look at the numbers. So I have a 12 and a minus three. I'm not gonna worry about the minus sign. Here, Three is gonna be the largest divisor of both of these, so I set it aside. We have two variables. So for x, we take a look at each term. Okay, here I note I have x squared. x by itself is just x to the one. So the lowest exponent's one. We set aside an x to the one. I go through for y. We have a y squared and a y to the fourth. Lowest exponent is y squared, okay, at two. So I'm gonna set that aside also. So our greatest common factor is 3xy squared. Now, we're to factor that out. So I take 3xy squared and I ask myself, what do I multiply by to get the 12x squared y squared? Okay, the y squared is already taken care of. So I'll need a four and an x. So that's gonna be a four x for the first term. For the second term, what do I multiply 3xy squared by to get to minus 3xy the fourth? Well, the three is already taken care of. X is already taken care of. Y squared, it's gonna need a Y squared. And we also need the minus sign. So 
for this term, I'm gonna need a minus y squared. That gives our factorization. We multiply through to check. Okay, and then we notice, okay, checking the exponents, we're gonna have a one plus one, which goes to two. I have a two plus two that goes to four. So this checks out. Let's consider a three-term polynomial. So I have 12x cubed y squared minus 6x squared y plus 18x. We go through our checklist. First, we consider the numbers. So 12 minus 6 and 18. We don't worry about the minus 1. The largest divisor is 6. So I set it aside. For step 2, we have two variables, x and y. We go through term by term for each. So I have x cubed, x squared, and x. X is just x to the 1, so lowest exponent's a 1. So I set aside an x. For the y, we have y squared, y, and no y. So since we have no y in this third term, y doesn't show up in the greatest common factor. So for greatest common factor, we have 6x. Now, step 3, we're going to factor out 6x from our polynomial. So we ask, how do I get from 6x to each term in the polynomial? To get to 12x cubed y squared, to get from 6 to 12, I multiply by 2. To get from x to x cubed, we multiply by x squared. There's no y squared, so I multiply by y squared. So 2x squared y squared for the first term. For the second term, we want to get to minus 6x squared y. So 6 goes to 6, but I need a minus 1. x to x squared, I need an x. Then there's no y to y, we need a y. So minus xy. Finally, to go from 6x to 18x, we just multiply by 3. Now, that's our factorization. I leave it to you to check your work. Now, we have two special cases. First special case, I want to factor out a minus sign. The effect is just to multiply through your polynomial by a minus 1. Okay, because minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. We just multiply through by minus 1. Now, that's just the same as saying change the sign on each term. So if I had minus 6x squared plus 2x minus 3, okay, I put this in parentheses, put the minus sign in front, and then we just change the sign on each term. So I have 6x squared minus 2x plus 3. Common mistake is just to change the sign on the first term. If you check your work, that'll come out, and then you have to do troubleshooting. Now, Second special case, we don't just need to factor out variables, so letters. We want, also want to factor out powers of expressions. So for instance, if I had 12x cubed times x plus 1 cubed minus 9x squared, x plus 1 squared, it's tempting to expand x plus 1 cubed, x plus 1 squared, see what comes out, and then see if you can work with that. In this case, it's going to be better just to treat the x plus 1 cubed x plus 1 squared as a power of another variable. So although I'm using x here, I'm going to want to use x plus 1 as its own variable. So you could call it y, do your work, then replace y with x plus 1 when you're done. Now, same procedure. So step one of the checklist, we consider the numbers. So I have 12 and 9, we're going to about the minus 1. Largest divisors are 3. We set it aside. Now, we have two variables here if we do it this way. So for the x, I consider x cubed, x squared. Lowest exponents are 2, so we set aside an x squared. I have x plus 1 cubed, x plus 1 squared. Okay, I could put them in a box if I just want to forget about the x plus 1 for now. Lowest exponents are 2, so we're going to set aside a box squared or an x plus 1 squared. That gives greatest common factor of 3x squared, x plus 1 squared. Now, factor that out of our polynomial. So how do we get from here to each term in the polynomial? 3 goes to 12 with a 4. x squared goes to x cubed with an x. x plus 1 squared goes to x plus 1 cubed with an x plus 1. So that's our first term here. To go from our greatest common factor to the second term, 3 goes to minus 9 with a minus 3. x squared goes to x squared with a 1, with doing nothing, and same for the x plus 1 squared to x plus 1 squared. So we just have a minus 3. Now, of course, once you get to here, you check your work, 
Okay, note we're not going to break up the x plus 1 at all when we check. Our next step would be to take this term in parentheses and just simplify. So we'd get 4x squared plus 4x minus 3. The question is, can we factor that any further? And that's going to be for another section. We move on to grouping. Here, we only consider polynomials with four terms. As a technique, grouping is hit or miss. So in general, it may or may not apply. But for next section, the key step to our factoring method will be grouping. Now, for a checklist, we start with a four-term polynomial. Step one, we factor out the greatest common factor. Then, we take our four terms, put them in pairs, factor the greatest common factors out of those. If what remains matches, grouping works, we factor, we get our answer. Otherwise, okay, if step two doesn't work, okay, we factor out the greatest common factors, we get no match, that might just mean we didn't pick the pairs correctly. So if you go through all pairs and it doesn't work, that means grouping is not going to apply to our problem. If we do get an answer, of course, we always check our work by multiplying. Now, example, let's try 7x squared minus xy plus 14x minus 2y. I start by factoring out the greatest common factor. Here, for the numbers, we have 7 minus 1, 14, and minus 2. So no number comes out. In these last two terms, okay, the third one, there's no y. Fourth one, there's no x. So there's no variable either. So no greatest common factor to pull out. I do pairs, so usually it'll just be first pair, second pair. In the first pair, I pull out the greatest common factor, so that'll be an x, leaving me with a 7x minus y. In the second pair, I can pull out a 2, leaving me with 2, 7x minus y. We note what we factored out matches 7x minus y. So grouping is going to work, and so we factor as before. So I get x plus 2, 7x minus y. Leave it to you to check the work. So we multiply, make sure you get your original polynomial. Another example, let's try 3x cubed plus x squared plus 6x plus 2. So much more typical, we have a single variable. Here, I want to put the exponents in descending order. We check for a greatest common factor. So we note there's no x in the last term. So we won't use x in the greatest common factor. Then we check the numbers, 3, 1, 6, 2. There's no greatest common factor to pull out. I go in pairs, so I'll do first two, second two. In the first part, I can factor out an x squared, leaving a 3x plus 1. Second part, I can factor out a 2, leaving me with 3x plus 1. These match, so we pull them out as before, leaving us with x squared plus 2, 3x plus 1. Leave it to you to check. So you multiply these together to get this polynomial here. Final example. So we'll put in a greatest common factor. We have minus 36 x squared y cubed plus 30 x squared y squared minus 18 x squared y plus 15 x squared. We look for a greatest common factor. Now for the number part, I note 15 is 3 times 5. So for the number parts, either a 1, 3, 5, or a 15. These terms are all divisible by 3, but they're not all divisible by 5, so I have a 3. I check the x and the y terms. Now, each term is going to have an x squared, so I can pull out an x squared. For the y's, we have no y in the last term, so there's no y here. It'll turn out to be a good idea to also pull out this minus sign out in front. So you'd notice that if you pulled out 3x squared, start doing your work, eventually that minus sign has to come out. So we might as well pull it out now. Now we factor that out. That leaves 12y cubed minus 10y squared plus 6y minus 5. We go to pairs. In the first pair, I can pull out a 2y squared. That leaves a 6y minus 5. Here, all I have is a 6y minus 5. So if I want to make this clear, I'll put a 1 in front. Okay, 1 times anything is your anything. Now when I factor out a 6y minus 5, what's left over is a 2y squared plus 1. So that gives my factorization 
Of course, I leave it to you to check the work.